What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. This is a scorching hot day, but this is TWA Motorsports. It is like 95. Humidity's crazy. And uh, as you can see, I kind of have my Corvette halfway in the garage, halfway out of it. And that is because I'm trying to get some shade. You can see the sunlight. We're really close here, guys. We're really, really close. But this is something I've wanted to do ever since I bought this car. And uh, honestly, guys, I have uh, I've not been driving this. This thing is so disgustingly dirty. But um, I bought this shifter a while back, and that is what we are going to be putting in today. We are going to put a C6 shifter in my C5. Now, uh, it doesn't really do a ton. It does, it does shorten the shifts, and, but the biggest thing is the shift knob. The shift knob in a C5, not only is it ugly, but it feels weird because it's square shaped, and so it's really hard to... I don't know, it's not hard to hold on to, but it just doesn't feel comfortable. So what I bought was a C6 shifter and I bought it used. You can find these things all over or you can buy a new one. I'll link both down below. Um, I'll link an eBay search if you guys want to see if you can find one. But there are a couple things that you're going to need other than the shifter itself. Uh, you just, all, all you really need is a shifter, the, the shift knob, but you're also gonna need a boot because the boot doesn't fit right and uh, we'll get into that a little later but let's get this thing out the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to get in the car we got to pop a couple panels off move some stuff out of the way but i'm going to take you guys step by step through this process and then once we finish up i'm going to take you guys for a drive because a lot of the times i'm working on these things and that's about all you guys see but i want to take this thing out for a spin and um, I'm probably gonna clean it up later on today, but I'm gonna kind of show you guys or explain to you how it feels once we get it installed. And uh, like I said, I wanna drive it. I haven't, been, I haven't driven this thing in so long. Uh, it's probably been two months since I've even started it. I literally just started it. It's been on a battery tender to pull it out. So let's get started on pulling this old one out of the way. So we're gonna start first by putting this thing into neutral. And you want to make sure that you have the e-brake set obviously but we need to pop this out of the middle now the easiest way to do that is to use a screwdriver or a uh, if you can get your fingernails in there that'd be great but it's um it's quite a ways down in there so chances are getting your fingernail in there probably not going to happen so once we get that out of the way we're no longer going to need it so you can just discard it uh, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I tend to um, not, I, I keep the stuff, but I'm never going to use it again. So now that we got that out, you need to take two screwdrivers, uh, two flathead screwdrivers, one on each side, and we're going to pop this little T-clip out. And uh, if you're really careful, you can do it without breaking it. If you do break it, it's not a big deal, but I'm going to go ahead. I can't hold the camera and do that, so I'm going to pop this thing out of the way, and then we'll be able to twist the shift knob off. This is what that thing looks like, and it is not the easiest thing to get off. But at this point, we can go ahead and unscrew the shifter, or the shift knob at least. And we'll set all this stuff aside. Holy cow, it's got a lot of thread on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in neutral, and I'm gonna push the boot down and uh, go ahead and unclip it for now. So as you can see, I got the boot out and mine does have a crack in it. Uh, pretty common for these things to crack. It's pretty cheap plastic, but all I did guys is I pushed it in in order to release these clips that you can see right here. So now that we've got that out of the way, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to start removing all the bolts so uh, or screws that hold this thing in place. So let's get the ashtray out of, out of the way. And you can see there's two screws here. There's a T15 here, and then there's one behind the ashtray. And then there's one more behind this panel. So I'm gonna pop this panel out with just a small flat blade screwdriver, being careful not to scratch anything. Once we get it out of the way, you'll have access to those three T15s. I wanted to show you guys the third one that you see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all three of those out, and that will be all on the front side of the console. Then we'll move to under the lid here. Now that we have those three screws out, uh, this one's quite a ways back there, so you may need a magnet so you don't drop it. But uh, everything's loose on the front side. I did go ahead and pull the uh, cigarette lighter out. But now we need to open this guy. These things are so squeaky. And we need to pull these covers off. I don't think I have enough fingernail to do it. But there's two 10 millimeters under here that we need to remove. 
you can see the two 10 millimeters that we need to take loose. Once I get those out, then we're gonna pop this panel up here loose. This, um, it's kind of shaped like a tombstone, honestly. Uh, we're gonna pop this thing up and there's two more under it. I just used a flathead screwdriver and popped this guy loose. And uh, you can see what I'm talking about here. There's two more 10 millimeters here and here. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and get it out of my way. So I'm gonna unplug not only this piece here, but I'm also gonna unplug the one that goes to the actual cigarette lighter adapter. Then we'll take these two 10 millimeters out and this back panel, other than the very bottom where your gas tank door is, uh, you'll have to unplug that kind of as you're lifting it out, but I'm gonna pull this out of the way and uh, it'll be completely loose from the car and out, I'm gonna actually set it in the back. I've got the console flipped up and guys, I can't get this undone without using a flat blade screwdriver. So I've just flipped up the back of it and now I'm gonna go ahead and get the gas door release uh, loose and pull that plug out and we should have this out of the way. Now that we have everything loose and I don't know if this rubber band was to, um, keep it from making noise or something or if it just fell down in there I guess the prior owner had had a rubber band in here but now we should be able to pull this back and then lift it out of the way now be careful because you've still got your cigarette lighter adapter hooked up here I'm just gonna kind of fold it over the um, e-brake here and just lay it over on the side so actually when I went to do that, the cigarette lighter adapter came unplugged. You can see it just clips around, which is completely fine. Now I don't have it dangling over here. And um, we are good to start removing these 10 millimeters that hold this rubber boot in place. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my 10 millimeter and take these four guys out here. And uh, then we should have access to the actual top of the shifter. Now that we have those four out, lift this out of the way and set it aside. I'm gonna have to clean this, it's gonna make me crazy. but. All right, so a couple things you'll notice in this shifter, the actual assembly, so the box itself is the exact same. So technically all we would have to do is take these guys out here and lift this out and just put the new shifter in, which I'm pretty sure is what I'm gonna end up doing. Now, if you want to replace um, these guys, so if you have a Z06 shifter, you'll know because these actual pieces that bolt it to it, these are like, grommets they will be solid on a z06 shifter and they are rubber on a c8 shifter and they're rubber obviously on a c5 shifter so uh, i think i'm going to leave mine and just take the actual shifter itself out so all we need to do is take these guys out and be very careful not to drop them otherwise you're going to have to have a magnet to try to fish them out of there but i'm going to take those out and we should be able to pull the shifter straight up now that we have all of those Pulled out, let's see if we can, may have to pry on this a little bit. I think I'm gonna have to have a little bit bigger screwdriver because there's a sealant they put in between here. There we go. And so that is it. So let's go grab the other one and take a look at the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and actually, let me just leave that there because the new one doesn't have that. I'm not gonna change the box, and I peeled that off my old box, so I'm gonna go grab the other shifter and we'll look at them side by side. So side by side, honestly, there's not a ton of difference other than, I mean, as you can see, the stick, the shape, uh, it kind of leans back more towards the driver. It is shorter, but as far as the pivot points, they're pretty close to the same, so I don't know that you're gonna grab a ton of shorter throw. I mean, you're gonna get a little bit, just because mainly this is worn out. I don't know, They this one's a little more worn than this one. Of course, this one did come used, so I didn't buy a brand new one. But all in all, I think the main difference is the getting the newer style shifter, you know, the actual shift knob will, to me, be better. And I do like the shape that it's pointed more towards the driver. So anyway, I'm gonna pop this thing into place and you do need this front piece that fell out. I'm gonna put it in here and then we will slide this new shifter in. And like I said, if you guys decide you wanna replace this, you can take the torques out and uh, you are gonna to have to do the actual, the whole assembly if you're going to be replacing that. But I'm gonna leave this box in. We're gonna just slap this back together and um, then we'll talk about the shift boot because I think I'm gonna to have to take staples out to get the, sh the new shift boot in, but we'll get to that. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this thing in place. 
we now have everything bolted back in place as far as the shifter goes. And um, I will tell you guys, if you get this front piece, so that front piece of metal, if you get that too far down, it will not go in gear. So make sure it's all the way to the top. And um, not really sure what that does. It may be the lockout, but we are good. It is shifting. So now we're ready to put this thing back together. I got the four nuts that hold the rubber grommet in place and I did try to wipe it off, but guys, this stuff right here just falls apart and I don't care how many times you wipe it, every time you move this, some more falls off of it. It makes me crazy, but uh, I'm gonna have to deal with it, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the panel that goes back in place, we'll set it in, and then I will go ahead and while I'm doing that, obviously we need to plug this guy in and um, then we can slide the other piece into place and then we can go back in with all the bolts. So now I've got a majority of it back together. So I have all the 10 millimeters and the plates back here, here, and then all the T15s are back in place. So now I just gotta snap all these panels in place. And then, like I said, we'll move on to the shift boot, which I don't know, we'll, we'll just see. Hopefully when I pull it apart, it doesn't just break in a million pieces. So this is the new boot that I ordered for the C6 shifter. Um, in a C5. So I need to put this boot basically on this plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a small flat blade screwdriver and carefully pry out all those staples. And uh, I don't know that I'll be able to reuse them. Honestly, trying to staple in that flimsy plastic may not work out for me, but I'm going to go ahead and get that off and get this plastic ring separated. So once I got the staples out and uh, this piece did crack the rest of the way through, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to glue it. I don't think I probably will. But for now, you do have quite a bit of glue to get loose after you get the staples out. So I'm going to go ahead. You can see I've got these two sections here taken off. Uh, but I'm going to work my way around. I'm just using that same flat blade screwdriver, just pushing out a little bit at a time and just being careful not to crack it. You know, like right here, you can see there's a hairline crack. Hopefully, I can keep it at least in one piece. So I decided to go ahead and try to glue this. So what I've done is I drilled a couple small holes, as you can see, and I ran a zip tie through it to hold it together because it wants to get out of shape. And this is the only way other than standing and holding it. And I just wasn't going to do that. So I did put quite a bit on there. I think I'm going to put some epoxy on it as well uh, once this dries a little bit. So it may not be quite as quick of a swap as I thought because we still have to glue the new boot on. But uh, I didn't want this to be cracked. It wouldn't have, the, the boot just wouldn't have went on right. So I did glue both sides because this side did have a crack. I didn't want it to go the rest of the way through. So I'm going to um, let this thing dry for a couple hours and then we'll hit this again uh, probably in the morning. What I did, and it's sticking like crazy, but while the glue was drying, I went ahead and pulled this so all the cutouts in it, uh, you want to line the seam up with the middle cutout so it's kind of like side to side as you have the shifter in. But I went ahead and glued those edges down. I figured while it was drying, we might as well um, glue the leather down. So that's what I did. Obviously, you can't use staples. If you tried to put a staple in that, it would just destroy it. So I, uh, I think we're good. I'm just going to let this thing dry for a couple hours and then we'll try to stick it back in the car. So at this point, this thing's been drying for a couple hours and uh, it seems to be dry, no tacky spots on it. So I think we're gonna see if we can get it in here and how it's gonna look. I think it'll probably look okay. I went ahead and put this thing in neutral. Just listening for those clips. It's kind of a janky design to be quite honest with you. It looks pretty good. All right, so the hard part, I think, will be putting the ring on. So obviously we have a ring and then we need to bolt down our shifter, but uh, trying to stretch the leather around this ring may be fun. Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll just have to see. I don't know that I'll be able to hold the camera and do that at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and put the shifter on. So I'll put the ring on here and then we'll put the shifter on and we'll see if we can get it adjusted. So it wasn't nearly bad, as bad as I thought it would be to get that leather stretched up over the uh, that ring, that beauty ring. So then, then you can turn it and unlock it. So um, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty good. It fits nice, fits all the way around. You know, that's the issue with 
leaving the C5 boot in is it just doesn't fit up against the shifter like it's supposed to. But I think this looks nice. It um, definitely has a shorter throw. Now, obviously I came out of a C6 ZR1 before and I will say it's not nearly as short as that one. Uh, I think there's probably something to do in the transmission with the reason it was like it was. But still feels better, definitely a better grip. And uh, well, let's see if we can take it down the road here in a little bit. Um, it actually, I just took it to get a screw because the person I bought this from didn't give me the screw to mount this. And I noticed that the AC is not working. Uh, and this is, this is what happens, guys, when you let a car set. But... Um, I'm gonna wait till the sun gets a little lower since it's so hot today, and then we'll take it for a ride and see what I think. So guys, I'm trying out a mount on my hat. We'll just have to see how it works. It's probably gonna be a little bumpy because it doesn't seem real stable, but we'll try it anyway. I will tell you just um, initially, the difference is, is pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Just the handle itself is just feels so much better on the hand now as far as like the throw it's probably a little shorter than it was before but i don't know we'll it's definitely better i love the the look of this it looks really good feels really good but let's see if we can i don't know if you guys heard it scrape it's so low to the ground compared to what it was before <laughs> I think it's tighter too, as far as closer together, closer to the passenger side or the driver's side. It just seems all around better. And I know my camera's bouncing, I can feel it on my hat. This car's it's it's uh, definitely a way better riding car ever since I put the um, coilovers all the way around, that's for sure. I need to get my AC fixed. It's like, it's already almost 90 degrees. And I'm trying to do this with the window up so you guys can hear me. So it's gonna be pretty warm. Might be a pretty short, short little drive. I'm just gonna let it heat up here. And then we'll rip on it a little bit. So we're back from the drive and sorry guys if the video like I said was really bouncy I'm gonna have to find a new way to mount uh, my GoPro while I'm doing driving videos or something like that I, I could have mounted it on the window I just didn't know if it would give the right angle on it so anyway I, I'm impressed guys I really like first of all I love this car I I don't care if it's the slowest Corvette I've ever owned the body style, the stance, the wheels, I love it. I absolutely love this car. I don't foresee me getting rid of it, even though it's not as fast as a ZR1, it's not as fast as a Z06, I just love the look of it. I, I like the look of this car more than any of the Corvettes that I've ever owned. I just, I've always loved these cars. Now, it's time to wash this thing. You can see, I live in an area where there's a lot of cows, so you can see that fly poop 
they they uh, they love white guys. But I'm pretty impressed with the shifter in there. It um it's like a night and day difference, and I definitely would recommend it to anybody who has a C5, even if the short, like I said, the sh the shift's not quite as short. Um, just the way the handle feels, and it's just a better looking one as well so it's not that big square piece that's kind of a pain to hold on to or just feels awkward in your hand but let me know what you guys think i'm uh like i said i'm pretty impressed with it and it's hot so i'm going to go in i'm going to pull this thing in the garage uh probably wash it off this evening but if you like this video guys like always please hit that thumbs up button if you are not subscribed smash that subscribe button while you're down there ring that bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video and well stay tuned to see what we work on next